Next on Worcester News tonight, a street is dedicated to a local hero in Oxford. How the Major League Baseball umpire is being remembered. Plus, from school to the real world, a Worcester Tech student is putting his skills to the test. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Olivia Lemon. Recreational marijuana sales are expected to begin in less than one month across the state of Massachusetts. More than 50 applications for business licenses are under review by the Cannabis Control Commission, and they say a large portion of them are in Worcester County. Our Brittany Schaefer joins us now with the details. Brittany. Olivia, there are currently 16 applications for Worcester County. The second highest county in Massachusetts only has five. One applicant I spoke to say it's the central location that made a big difference. 51 applications are in for recreational marijuana businesses to open shop in Massachusetts. And according to the Cannabis Control Commission, Worcester County is the popular spot. I've noticed concentration in Worcester. There are 16, I think, of the 51 that are in, in Worcester or in Worcester County. Um, and, you know, that is, a, that is a concentration, but I'm not, I'm not drawing any conclusions from that. I think it's just premature. There are currently 16 applications in Worcester County, including one from Cultivate in Leicester. The medical marijuana dispensary says central Massachusetts has been the perfect location. Right on Route 9, um, easy to get to. Uh, there's also not a lot in this area for other sites. Uh, so rather than, you know, driving an hour uh, to some of these other locations, uh, we'll be right here. President Sam Barber says since opening back in December, they have made a positive influence on the town. We brought 20 jobs to the town in the process of hiring 12 more, and, you know, we're just excited to be a part of the community. And town administrator David Genero agrees. While the town is only having one retail shop, he says they have several applications coming in for distribution centers. We are all challenged with revenue. You have to be creative, and this is one way to do it. Those three agreements alone are worth, if maxed out, almost a million dollars. The Cannabis Control Commission expects more applications to come and says they'll be reaching out to current applicants next week. Moving uh, quickly through the process, but we're being thorough. Barber says he expects his application to go through and they hope to open recreationally on July 1st. Brittany Schaefer, Worcester News Tonight. A Worcester man is arrested Tuesday. Police say he was selling crack cocaine. Worcester's neighborhood response team was patrolling the area of Pleasant Street after complaints about quality of life issues. Officers saw a man approach 30 year old Jesus Hernandez with money in his hand. Police say Hernandez and the man disappeared behind a stairwell and then they came back. He was clutching a small object. Officers developed probable cause. Hernandez had engaged in, in a narcotics transaction. He was placed under arrest and is facing multiple charges, including distribution of a Class B substance and possession of Class B with intent to distribute. Residents of an apartment building catching fire Tuesday night are back on scene today, checking out the remains of their home. Firefighters responded to Oberlin Street just before 8 p.m. last night. One per person was transported to the hospital where at last check they remain in serious condition. Several others were displaced. One resident we spoke to say firefighters were able to rescue his two dogs from inside. Cubicle. She was hidden in there and my cubicle is white and she's white so they could see her all the smoke and finally they found her. And the cause of Tuesday's fire is under investigation. An Oxford hero is honored with his own day and street sign. Steve Palermo passed away last year, but the Major League Baseball umpire is known most for his heroic actions. Our Roslyn Flaherty joins us now with more on how the town is remembering him. Roslyn. Olivia, the town says naming a street that he visited often after him is a way to remember and pay tribute to the umpire. This street in Oxford is now named after a local hero. Steve Palermo was raised in the town and went on to become an umpire in Major League Baseball. Whenever he was umpiring a game, I'm willing to bet that a good proportion of the community watched that particular game. His career was cut short after he was shot and paralyzed from the waist down while trying to prevent a robbery. Not only made him a town hero, but a national hero. 
one that everyone could look up to. Selectman John Sad and the town of Oxford decided to name the road Palermo Drive after getting approval from the MLB. Palermo played sports and went to school at the end of the street. The family and Steve in particular was very familiar with that area. Judy Sampson grew up with the umpire and says it's great to see his name driving by. It's a nice tribute to him and his family. The town even dedicating June 5th to the legend. <laughs> Palermo died of cancer last year at 67 years old. Sad says this street sign is a way for his name to live on. It's an ideal remembrance for someone who uh, did so much for the community and for society in general. Now, Sad says Palerm Palermo's family is still very active and still lives in Oxford. Rosalind Flaherty, Worcester News Tonight. Also in Oxford, a local resident is sprucing up the outside of the town's library. Wayne Yacino says he was approached by the town to cut down a tree out front and there was a bid going for artists to cart the stump. Yacino got the job and has been working on it for about a month. He says it should be complete in the next couple of days. The local artist says a lot of people have stopped by to check out his work. Amazing. Sometimes it's probably 50 to 100 people a day, you know what I mean? State police, local police, people from, um, met people from Alabama, from all over the place. And I just, um, trying to do this for a living. I mean, it's cool that I have the talents, but I just, sometimes I don't see how good that I do. And Yacino says this is his first tree carving, but he looks forward to doing more in the future. From school to the real world, an apprenticeship program at Worcester Technical High School allows graduates to learn through hands-on experience. And a new program with the Worcester Housing Authority will give students the opportunity to give back to the community. Our Chandler Walsh joins us now with more. Chandler. Olivia Anthony Ferraro is the first apprentice in this pilot program. He's fresh out of high school and in a handful of years will be able to become a licensed, licensed plumber. Anthony Ferraro gets to work in the Worcester Technical High School plumbing shop. So when you cut your pipe, it makes a little burr in the inside. The 2018 graduate is the first apprentice in the school's new partnership with the Worcester Housing Authority. We're excited about this apprentice, you know, coming on, and we hope that it's going to open the door for many more. Worcester Tech's head of plumbing, James Smith, says Ferraro is a top student and hard worker. He says Ferraro began a plumbing co-op in his junior year, but was working in his field even earlier. This is my 20th year of teaching. Anthony, I believe, is the first student who has gone to work after sophomore year. Worcester Tech places students in co-ops and apprenticeships to gain experience. Ferraro was one of about 160 placed in a co-op his senior year. We have students who actually, because they've done such a phenomenal job out there, the companies are nice enough to offer them full-time positions upon graduation. You start water piping, you start doing drainage, venting, and you just fall in love with it. You want to go to work every day. The Worcester Housing Authority is the largest landlord in the city and will allow Ferraro to do plumbing in smaller houses and 20-story buildings alike. Born and raised in Worcester, Ferraro hopes his apprenticeship turns into a long career. I just love the city. I would love to work here for the rest of my life. And he says it's about more than just doing the work he loves. I wanted to give back to Worcester. I think it's going to be awesome helping out uh, low-income families and the elderly. Ferraro has been hard at work each day since the end of his school year. He starts his apprenticeship later this month. Olivia? What a great story. Thank you, Chandler. There is a dress code controversy heating up in Worcester. When a middle school tells a student her shorts are too short, but she says she's out of options. Malcolm Johnson has the story. As a recent high school graduate, Molly McNamara tells me dress code policy made shopping tough. They don't even sell shorts in like the, the popular stores that are like past that length. So it is hard to, you know, shop with that policy at hand. Worcester School's dress code policy states girls can't wear shorts or skirts shorter than the tip of their fingers when their arms are held straight against their sides. The length that we may be talking about for certain bodies, styles and types isn't readily available to our students. And I think we at least need to consider what's appropriate in this day and age with what's available. School committee member Molly McCullough says it's time to reconsider the policy after receiving an email from Sullivan Middle School 8th grader Lily Chisholm. In the email she states, I was told my shorts were too short and should not be worn into the building again. Considering the shorts were deemed appropriate by my family that morning, 
I did not expect to be berated because of my attire. Chisholm did research, including the average thigh bone and arm length based on age, to support a change in the policy. We have to follow the policies of the school committee until they're changed. It's in the policy, but would you all be willing to change the policy? Well, I think that, that would be up to them. I mean, you can't have those little shorts that, you know, just go right down below your underwear. Parents and former students would like to see changes to the rule. I don't think there's anything wrong with um, having your legs showing. Men wear shorts and their legs are showing. Even just tweaking the policy and maybe not even like getting rid of it fully, but definitely tweaking it would be like a good idea. We're told that no permanent changes will come, but the dress code policy will be discussed at tomorrow's school committee meeting. Reporting in Worcester, I'm Malcolm Johnson, Worcester News Tonight.